Wow, it sure has been a while since we've been mildly intrigued. Well, your bleak and meaningless lives just got very slightly more interesting because today we have not 15, not 25, not 21, but 20 slightly sort of interesting facts. But on what? Well, we've done weapons before. Twice. We can't possibly do more. Wait a minute. What's this over here? Whoa. Somehow even more mildly interesting weapon facts. Number 20. Let's go. Every time you hit someone with the Vita Saw, a random organ will pop out of the person you hit. But the Vita Saw only needs to be active when you hit someone to trigger this effect. This means you could fire a bunch of syringes and quickly switch back to the saw, and then BAM, you got organs everywhere. It's like the 4th of July, but with organs. It's possible for the Dragon Series Fireball to be blocked by some other projectiles. Yet the other projectile will continue to go through it. It's actually very noticeable on rapid fire weapons like the syringe gun. Despite not actually taking damage, a coded player can ignite themselves with the gas passer's gas by shooting themselves with a stickier rocket jumper. The effect of two battalions backups will not stack with one another when they're activated at the same time, but it will stack with the selected type of the vaccinator's uber, allowing you to take almost no damage from that type. The lasers from the Righteous Bison and the Pomson, arrows from the Huntsman, and syringes from the syringe gun and the creator's crossbow all count as bullets when it comes to the vaccinator's bullet resistance. This also means they deal 10% more damage to a soldier or demo man with a pain train equipped. Interestingly, an arrow that's on fire appears to count as both fire and bullet damage. Melee weapons were also once counted as bullet damage, but that was changed way back in the Christmas update of 2010 when the Fists of Steel were introduced. When building Mf, the Phlogistonator sometimes won't take into consideration damage or fire resistance. This can allow the Phlogistonator to gain full or close to full Mf off of Vaccinator Medics, Deadringer Spies, and Danger Shield Snipers without technically dealing the 300 damage needed to normally fill a charge. When the Thermal Thruster was first released, its original HUD icon very, very, extremely closely resembled the community-made workshop item, the Furious Flyer, possibly hinting that this was originally intended to be the model before the Valve-made one was added to the game. When the Razorback was first released, it had a 15% speed penalty on wearer. This would have brought Sniper's movement speed down to 85%, making him slower than the Devil Man. However, this was removed only a month after the weapon came out. The Fists of Steel originally lacked team coloring, appearing as the blue-silver color for both teams. A few months after its release, it was given an extremely red color for the red team, before it was toned down a few days later. Scrap stats originally intended for the Killing Gloves of Boxing would have had it heal the Heavy and all of his nearby teammates 50 health on kill, as well as increase their random critical hit chance by 10%. The downside would have been that the Heavy would be forced to taunt after every kill with it. On the Jungle Inferno update page, the second banana is advertised as healing half the health that the Sandwich does, meaning 150. But since it was added to the game, it's always healed 200. The Scottish Resistance was said to be able to lay down twice as many stickies as stock on its original War update page, but it was only ever to have an additional 6 bombs out at a time. The Huntsman page of the Sniper vs. Spy update claimed it carried 18 arrows when in-game it only has 12, and the Neon Annihilator was said to have a 20% slower firing speed as opposed to the 20% damage penalty it has in-game, though I have mentioned that last one once before. In the separate TF2 beta game, two nerfs were tested for the Tomislav. One of them would have given it a minus 50 health on wear penalty, and the other just completely removed the faster spin-up altogether, making the only upside a silent spin-up. There exist unused kill icons for the Rap Assassin's Ornament, which currently uses the same one as the Sandman's Ball, a special kill icon for a player with a half Zatoichi instantly killing another player using it, an icon for killing a player connected through a medigun beam with the third degree, and one for killing a laughing player with a holiday punch. When the Huntsman was first released, it was left-handed by default, for some reason. The Scottish Resistance has two unused Sticky Bomb models, one being covered in a bunch of small spikes, and the other having no spikes at all. The spikeless one was eventually given to the Sticky Jumper when it was given a unique model. The Blue Stalker also has an unused syringe projectile that kind of resembles a dart. 
There exists an unused model for the Snack Attack that uses the same frame as the Apps app. It's like a reskin of a reskin. Believe it or not, for a brief period, the Sharpened Volcano Fragment was actually sort of semi-useful. When it was first released, afterburn caused by the fragment did not have a set burn time and could last until the burning player was killed by it. This was fixed four days later. When the Huntsman's Arrow is lit on fire, it won't extinguish if you go underwater. Huh. If a heavy is killed while holding a sandwich or any food item, collecting the ammo box that heavy drops will heal the person who picked it up for 50 health, or 75 if they're playing a scout. Before the gunmetal update, picking up dropped weapons counted as ammo, or in the case of the sandwich, 50 health. So since then, touching the dropped sandwich does nothing, but picking up the ammo heals you. It's kinda weird, but I guess it works. Of the 133 non-reskin unlockable weapons, only a small handful have had their stats completely unchanged since being added to the game. These include the Candy Cane, Boston Basher, Pain Train, Gas Passer, Back Scratcher, Sharper Volcano Fragment, excluding the bug fix we mentioned earlier, the Third Degree, Hot Hand, Killing Gloves of Boxing, Holiday Punch, Frontier Justice, with the exception of putting a cap on the number of wrench crits, Southern Hospitality, minus the change that only lasted one day, the Uber Saw, not counting the taunt kill it got later on, the Machina, Classic, and the Shehensha. That's 16 weapons out of 133. That's like 12% of all non-stock weapons. Boy, these facts sure had me sitting normally on the middle of my seat. In fact, they were almost possibly fascinating. So there was like a, a seven month hiatus since the last facts video, and I, I figured now is a, is a good enough time to bring it back. Possibly with more sequels to previous ones, kind of like this. I'm thinking maybe hats again. I was considering doing a soundtrack one, but it's kind of hard to find information on them. At least semi-interesting stuff. But I don't know. Maybe you want about, uh, like, real-life TF2 merchandise? I think that might be kind of cool, but it could also make for, like, a separate kind of video on its own. But, uh, I don't know. Let me know what you guys want to see. And until next time, peace out, dogs!